Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. So this will be the first, uh, my first fly back since um, I've been away from my surgery. And for this one we are going to tie the Mar Lodge. This is a, a pattern out of Price Tannett's book, How to Dress Salmon Flies. It's not a terribly difficult pattern, but it's a uh, it's a really really nice pattern. I really like it, and um, had the privilege of tying it for the first time the other day. And um, now I'd like to put it on video for you guys. So, as you can see, I've already started with the silk gut. Um, I've got that already all wound on, and then I put a coat of Salire Clear over it, just to make really keep that nice and firm to the hook. So briefly, I'm just going to do a quick little underbody to help smooth that out a little bit. And for this, I'm just using some woolly nylon. Um, it's wound onto a spool. Uh, it comes in a much larger spool. You can get it on Amazon for like 10 bucks, and you'll get like, I don't know, a thousand feet or something. And, uh, more than enough to last you years. But as you can see, this stuff is quite stretchy. So it makes for a really nice material to wrap onto your underbody and it bulks up pretty quick too. Now this isn't going to have a terribly thick underbody, just a, just a little bit. It helps kind of smooth things out a little and the body on this fly is mainly going to be um, tinsel with a little bit of floss in the middle. So tinsel bodies, uh, if you haven't seen any of my if you haven't seen my previous videos where I've talked about tinsel bodies, um, tinsel bodies require a smooth underbody to get the desired look. I'm just wrapping it back to about where I'm going to start the fly. So it'll go back a little bit more onto the actual hook shank. And then I'm going to come back forward. That creates just a little bit of a transition right there. This nice little smooth slope here. Gonna wrap it back forward. That is just a little half inch on there. And then again a drop of veneered Salire Clear. And that's just right here at the, t at the front. And that'll keep that knot in place. So as you're moving about the fly and wrapping things on, um, that knot won't come out. This little uh, half hitch. Okay.
I'm come back a little bit more. And then we'll tie in our tinsel. This is a flat silver tinsel from Lagarden. You can see how wide that is. I think this would be right around a 12 or a four, size 12 or 14 um, tinsel. Now when you're wrapping your tinsel, you, especially if you're using metal tinsel, you want to be careful because metal tinsel is it's got some sharp edges, so you can wind up cutting your thread very easily. Now it's just like floss. You wrap it back, and then forward again. I also recommend that you use a rather junk pair of scissors um, for your tinsels. Tinsels will destroy a, pair, a good pair of scissors very quickly. Okay, so now for the tail, we've got Golden Pheasant Crest. And with this one, I don't typically like doing this, but I'm going to for this one. Rocky, no. Usually I like using a tail that's shorter, um, a smaller crest, but for this one I want it to have a, a fuller, thicker tail. So... I'm using a rather larger feather and then just tying it in a little short. All right, now I've already got the wing all married up. If you haven't seen my videos on how to marry wings, um, go back and have a look. Um, last year I had a couple of videos about them. I'll do another updated one uh, in the near future. And here's the wing for today's fly. Oh yeah, that's gonna look good. Oh, the hook I'm using, by the way, is a Byron Bure hook. It's a Playfair Limerick size 3.0. If you're interested in any of Byron's hooks, here's his info. Look him up. I absolutely love using his hooks. He's got all different kinds. Just let him know what you need and what size, and uh, he'll take good care of you. All right, so now we go back.
and then we'll get our three. Wax. Another gentleman on YouTube, uh, Sergi Fesco, that he, he uh, does instructionals as well. I believe he's he's from in Europe somewhere, so his videos are not in English, but um, they're still very informative and instructional videos. And one of the, and in his videos, I noticed he uses a marker, a black magic marker. Instead of using wax on certain parts of the fly, he uses a black magic marker and that creates the same instance where things don't slip and the thread doesn't slip. Alright, so now we've got the tail on. Let's work on the tail veiling briefly, which is his small jungle cock eyes. So we'll take two back to back. I feel like those are slightly too big, but they will fill in that negative space here under the wing nicely. Mm, still too big. I'll grab a couple smaller ones off of this neck real quick. That's better. All right, so I'm going to put those back to back. Much better. All right. And so now we'll strip away the fuzz of the bases. And some of the other feather fibers. Okay. So I pulled that off of there right here. Them together. And we'll tie them in there so more of this has to go. I'm going to take my pliers and flatten the stems on those.
on there. You want to get them as close together as you can, but also leave a little bit of space between them. As you can see right here, I've left a little bit of a gap. That's so that way when you put the underwing on, the underwing can partially sit right in between them without muddling up the feather that much. Trim away the excess. And the butt is black ostrich hurl, as in most patterns. So we'll take the ostrich hurl. I like using the left side of the actual ostrich feather. As you can see, I've got most of it stripped away. I've used a lot. The left side just offers a better angle at tying it on. It can still be done with the right side, no problem, but I just prefer the left a little bit more. So now we're going to strip away some of the base there. Then you want to tie it on so that way the fuzzy side, the part with the barbules, is actually sticking upwards. And if you do that, when you go to wrap it, pull it towards you, and then up, and you'll notice that when you do that, <clears throat> it'll start to wrap with the fuzzy side facing the back of the fly. And then just see if you can get three or four good touching wraps. Next, we have to tie in the ribbing. Now, the ribbing, I'm using large oval tinsel from Vivas. <clears throat> now, you can do this two ways. You can tie the tinsel the majority of the way up the body to keep the body even, or you can also strip away some of the tip and what you're doing here stripping that outer sheathing away exposes that silk core at the middle and that silk core is nice and soft and you can tie that right to your hook without bulking up near the butt if you try tying just the normal end you try tying just this this end cut the way it is you'll wind up leaving a lump right there and the body on this is flat tinsel, um, black silk, and then flat tinsel again. So you want to make sure that the body is very even on this. So stripping away some of that outer sheathing, in my opinion, is the better move. At least that's what I prefer.
I'm going to tie that in the quartering away side of the hook. And now you see you've got no lump, and you can wrap your pencil all the way up. I've already marked out on the fly here where the body segments are going to end and begin. You can, you can judge where your body segment is going to be by doing some tinsel wraps. So the third one, the third tinsel wrap, should pretty much bisect that middle section. And they'll tie off on the sixth wrap right there. So that's a good way to judge it. And then you lay your tinsel out like that, draw your lines, and you can back the tinsel off and begin working on the main body. So now the main body I'm using, same as they did in the tag, I'm using Lagartan um, flat silver tinsel. And there's the label if you'd like to take a look. Now, see how long. Now when you do your tinsel, the best way to get a nice smooth even body is just like you do floss. Start at the very beginning of the section you're about to wrap. Then you take your tinsel, pull it upward, and then make the, the folding kink. And just press that down. And start wrapping backwards, touching turns, not overlapping. If you overlap, you'll wind up with too thick of a body. And then work your way back. Doing the same thing, touching turns. Oh, I hate when that happens. Okay. Like I said in my other videos, it's always good to make sure you use. I don't want to get a fray in the line, in the thread. It's always good to make sure that you use uh, a junk pair of scissors on your tinsel.
And using a, using a regular pair of scissors, your good scissors on your tinsel, that's going to screw up your, your scissors pretty quickly. All I'm doing right now is just thickening up this middle section a little bit before I start wrapping my floss. I could leave it like that um, if I was going to fish this fly, but I think this one is going to go into a frame. So now So now I'm just using some Japanese silk here. It's a very small section of silk, so it won't be terribly bad. I do like putting silk onto a bobbin, though, and then wrapping it that way. It just always seems to work out a little bit better, and it's always a little bit easier. But in this case, it's being such a small area that... I'm okay doing it this way. And you can see how I've got it nice and widened out and flattened. I'm going to try to keep it that way. And I'll give you a nice smooth wrap as you go. And just move this camera back just a hair. In the excess. I'm just go through and smooth it out a little bit and burnish it. This tail doesn't want to cooperate with me. It's a beautiful tail, but it kind of wants to curve a little bit towards the back, the other side, opposite side of the fly. So I got to keep tinkering with it. Okay, so now I need another strip of tinsel. Somehow the tinsel has gotten a little bit mixed up. There we go.
All right, so I've got a little bit of a kink in my tinsel here. That I've smoothed out a little, but you can still see that it's got a little bit in there. So what we'll do is we'll put that on the first wrap over so it gets covered on the way back. All right, so now the guinea feathers, uh, for this one it calls for speckled guinea, which is this here. And then this is more of a spotted guinea. So the speckled guinea you usually find around the neck um, and the rump. And the spotted guinea you'd find throughout the rest of the body. Now to tie these on, I'm using two of them, one of each. So what I'm going to do now is I want to strip off one side. Guinea feathers are also very, the, the stem, the rachis, is quite delicate. So you have to be very gentle when you're stripping them. I'm stripping one side. I just realized that the camera angle is not quite right on those. Hopefully you're able to see these. speckled guinea and spotted now to tie in the speckled and take it right down to the very tip of the feather Once that's tied off, and you're certain it's nice and tight, you can go ahead and remove this. Okay. And go ahead and start wrapping it. And you want to be gentle on it, otherwise you wind up breaking that. And just wrap it so that way everything lays backwards. Use your finger to lay it back. Sorry about the shaking. I mean, today's been one of those days that Shaking's been a little worse. Okay, so... That looks fairly good. And now we're going to do the same with the spotted guinea. This one I actually think I'm going to tie in normal and I'm not going to strip it. I just want to thicken up that throat a bit. So again, we'll just tie in the tip. Once you're sure that that's tied in nice and sturdy, go ahead and snip off the excess. A little bit sticking out, and it's farther than forward than I want. I'll just use a cauterizer and burn that little bit off. I think I need batteries for that. That's fine. So now. To tie this, what we're going to do is 
fold it back and then as we wrap keep it keep it both sides folded back I don't use hackle pliers very often, they just, I almost find they get in the way, but I feel like in this instance I need them. Alright, see so how we've got some fibers that are all kind of all over the place. Some want to go forward, some want to go back. Well, that's not exactly what we're shooting for here. We want them all to be wanting to face backwards. So right now what I'm doing is this is called trapping it, trapping the hackle. And I'm just going to try to tame it. Split it from the top. These will probably have to go, these middle ones. Lots of patterns, the, the throat should actually rise up above the hook shank a bit and be kind of underneath the wing. But with this one, the throat, I find, should look under, it should be underneath the shank of the hook. And what we do is we take our fingers and twist it. And all the ones that we start getting that forward shape, that forward curve, these ones in the front especially, probably wind up plucking those and pulling them out. Unless of course I can convince them to do otherwise, but it doesn't look like they're going to cooperate. You can also wet your fingers and that'll help too. Some guys like to lick their fingers, but you're working with feathers that came off of dead skins and, you know, birds carry all kinds of nasty diseases and feather dust and... I don't really recommend licking your fingers. I keep a bowl of water right next to the bench. There we go. Leave those there like that, let them dry while we work on the rest.
I'm not leaving much room for myself for a head there. Okay. So now the pattern does call for um, tippet in strands. So basically you'd be taking the tippet and, and just stripping parts off of it and using that. But I find that a hole under wing in this pattern looks better. Now I pre-selected these tippets. I don't to do that. I pre-selected these and then I went ahead and, and measured them and cut them. And there's a little bit of wax here. If you watch, uh, I don't know if, you, if any of you are familiar with Sergei Fesco. Um, I'm not sure what country he's out of, but he does do salmon fly videos, and he's recently put some out about uh, different techniques and things that you can do. Um, he's really quite an accomplished fly tire. Um, I'd highly recommend checking him out. He recommends using a black magic marker on thread instead of wax. I've never tried it, so you know what? Let's uh, let's see it. What happens? And supposedly, the black magic marker prevents slipping with your thread, which, when you're starting back up by the head, slipping does become a problem. I'll deal with that later. 